Stanis, 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 Stanis,
foul, Dignadice. For Dignadice, that's four. Now, at the end of these 12 minutes, we will find out if San Miguel can wrap it all up, their first all Filipino, or we will find out if we will have another game on Tuesday. Should that happen, it will be Joe Cantada and Andy Howe taking care of the broadcast chores on that day. Definitely Alulo. a good night for Asaitono here. Alulor is now being replaced here by Capacho. Maybe the Lupan going with three small men. That includes Jojo Lastimosa and Dindo Pumaren. Jerry in the ball game with four personal fouls. By the way, in connection with the feast of Our Lady of Peña Francia, the patroness of Bicolandia, there's going to be a big cycling event. We'll tell you more about that as we sail along. 30, minute, 30 seconds, rather, have gone by. San Miguel with a nine-point lead. One-on-one -on -one there for Sam Boylin and a strong drive to the hoop. He has a three-point play coming up. Found Lastimosa. It's just great determination on Sam Boy to get past Jojo Lastimosa there in that play. When it's time to fly, you go to the Skywalker. See, Norman has thrown in a couple of different plays here. He, sometimes he goes to the one-on-one, -on -one, the motion play. They variate it and get the uh, defensive team thinking of what's going to come in next. You know, our production team, when they visited Norman, they told me that they had two very intense practices during Friday and Saturday. Asaitono, it will not count. An offensive to foul. Eyes. He put down his head against the defensive Asaitono. man, got him out of the way, and an offensive foul, his third called against him. San Miguel, 12-point lead, 11-11 left on the ball game. She puts the shoulder block there against uh, Ives Dignadice to get him out of the way. 90-78, that's our score. San Miguel is in front. Here's Sam Boy Lim. The Skywalker goes to the franchise. Here's Ives. Ives, it's three a second. three second violation. Samboy was looking upstairs. He was hoping for a possible offensive rebound, not realizing that his teammate was still trying to dribble. That they were still passing the ball around. 10.48 to play. Pumaren pulls up. Seven points in the ball game for Dito Pumaren and eight right now. That is his average in this series, 8.4 a ball game. Ten point lead for the San Miguel Beer team. Clock is down to 10.38. Samboy, they clear out for him. He goes up. He faced the triple team in that play. Not exactly a good shot from Samboy because of that defensive stance. Here's Pomaren, the bullet with a shuffle. He weaves inside. Difficult shot won't go. Dignadice for the rebound. Dignadice already with eight rebounds. Samboy pounding the ball hard. They go to Agustin. Who wisely sets it up. Doesn't force a shot where there are no possible offensive rebounders for them. Samboy Lim. Clock is down to six, the shot clock that is. Hector is free! Oh, and what a great clutch player Hector Calma is proving to be. Huh? 17 big ones for Hector Calma. 12 in the second half, and he has hit almost all outside shots he has taken here in the second half. And a poor shot selection there by Capacho. Trying to get his team back quickly with a three-point play. Purefoot's going very early to the court of last resort. 12-point lead. Samboy fighting against Capacho's defense, a foul. San Miguel with the edge of the rebounds in that third quarter. It's been that way the whole game for them. As for the three quarters, they have taken care of the boards very well. Backdoor play for Fernandez, but no love pass by Hector. Ato Agustin, good luck. Samboy trying to keep it alive, a foul. On Glenn foul. Capacho, Capacio. number five now on him. Watch it once more. Look at the way Samboy positions for the offensive rebound, gets Capacho out of the way. During the practice session that we covered, you know, Ricardo Brown was giving pointers to Samboy Lim, and it was so interesting and so nice to see Ricardo Brown starting to handle the basketball one more time. Well, he and Samboy are very good friends uh, on this team. They are supposed to be two of the closest friends, and I'm sure that Ricky would like his team to win this one for him. Pidor driving hard, it won't go. Rebound being struggled for. Cholas winning out. And referee Ernie De Leon stops the play with the whistle. Pilfoot's really lost. If they're gonna have to make, make that comeback, somebody's gotta act as, as a leader right now. If not, they will not come back anymore in this ball game. Cholas. Blocked by Ives Dignadice. Ooh, and a foul. Jojo got into Samboy again in that play. 
Just a tough cookie, some boy is. But again, Pure Foods nailed to 80 points like they were in the second quarter when they were nailed to 30 points. Here's Pumaren. Time down to eight minutes and eight seconds. Nothing is going now for Pure Foods. They're taking very poor shots. You know, they're thinking at this point they cannot rally unless they come up very quickly instead of playing a slow down game and trying to get their momentum going for them. Very true, Andy. Here's Samboy going to Fernandez. They have 10 seconds on the shot clock. Fernandez rolls it to Palma. Urko. One of his few misses here in the second half. And Purefoos is just crumbling right now. Inbound by the Hot Dogs. Capacho. Three-point shot. Fernandez for the rebound. And you know, I don't think Hector Calmo was given a rest here in the second half. You know, Norman really wanted to push him here in the second half. Yes, there's a lot of faith in this guy. It's outside, a turnover by the Beermen. Well, they use a couple of seconds there, which is the important thing for them. Use 10, 15 seconds every time you get possession of the ball and you're all right. Yes, and they're in front by 17. Asaitono, three-point shot. Patrimonio. Trying to stuff it in, couldn't get enough jump, but they gave him the follow-up shot. Pure Foods continues to press to Elmer on the other end. Elmer's gotten a lot of layup here in the last two minutes of play. Elmer with 25 points to lead San Miguel. Alolor, left quarter, Wingo. Definitely a good acquisition, has certainly helped them here. Long baseball pitch by Fernandez to Dignadice, who wisely caps out. Four corner basketball. Samboy Lim, one hander. It won't go. Rather lazy shot. But I think he doesn't want to get hurt. Here. That's the most important thing now. They have a victory wrap up. And step number two to a possible grand slam has been acquired by San Miguel Beer. And now San Miguel, 37 seconds away from winning their first All-Filipino crown. And their second round this year. Samboy with a dunk. And there's a mad scramble. Vince. Norman is visibly very happy. Who would have been? What a great series his team has played. They had four straight losses during the end of the semifinals. And they lost the first game of this championship series <laughs> a big slap there there's a foul and that will send Fang to the line in fact in this game they even e had an equal chance going into the first half of play well they played well in the first quarter but in the second quarter San Miguel's power told against them and they you know they had several lapses here in this ball game somewhere in the second quarter and somewhere here in the uh, third quarter only 14 seconds before we make it official. Patrimonio. Getting some statistics on follow-up shots here yes. by his lonesome. Okay, we will have the entire awarding ceremony, some interviews. 128 to 109. High looper by Ramon. Only two more seconds. And that will do it. San Miguel has won the PBA Fiesta All Filipino. As the banners are unfurled. They did it in spite of that big scoring slump by Briggs. Joe Willisaga trying to fill the slack left behind by Briggs to tie the ball game anew at 80 all. And we're 32 seconds into the fourth and final period. Third quarter stats on your screens. Alma. Passed off to the wrong man. Well, he was distracted by a very crippling defense applied on him by the big man of Añejo. That's right. They were jumping all over him, preventing his vision to, to hit the open man. Jaworski looking. And there's Brown. Good timing. 2-1-1 one, one break. And if Inis Wanley can complete this three-point play, it will be the biggest margin enjoyed by San Miguel Pierre all night, practically. For a long while anyway, Joe. Yes, Wanley completes it 83 to 80. 
Añejo, brother, San Miguel fans came well prepared for a celebration in anticipation of a Grand Slam victory tonight. Ray Cuenco battling it out fiercely for the rebound, and he gets Paul caught. Dignadice. Dignadice was the culprit. Only two points for him. That came on a follow-up shot of a miss by Chito in the third quarter. Well, Ray Cuenco is unquestionably a player of a high caliber, but his ability to withstand pressure is still highly suspect. 83-81, just a two-point lead for San Miguel Pierce. Snapshot by Ricardo Brown. A tall loop in vain. Joey Luis Saga grabbing the ball away from brother Chito. Ah! Chito. Pop with his punch down. Brown. Yes, Valley, sir. Volleyball time now there. And San Miguel jo enjoys a four-point lead. He's still groping for that three-point bomb. In the meantime, they're still nursing a four-point deficit. And you can just make that a six-point deficit now on the heroics of Innis Watley. It's 87-81. 9.36 to play in this basketball game. Game number five in the best of seven championship series. 25-foot shot by Joey Loizaga. Briggs with a follow-up. In vain. He gets it right back. He's going to go for a second serving. A third serving? Possibly. Yes. A lot of offensive rebounds there after that block from behind by Enis Watley. Lead has been cut down to 4, 87, 83. Still a lot of time in this ball game. You know, that was a very crucial basket by Briggs because if they had failed and San Miguel had scored on the opposite end. Oh, good steal here by Ray Cuenco. Uh, Hector Calma got himself in too deep to make any shot at all. Briggs double team here and there's a foul by Watley. That's number five. So Ennis Watley from here on in will have to walk the tightrope. He will be impotent on defense. That makes him the likeliest candidate for disqualification in this basketball game. Fourth quarter stats, Dr. J. Yes, you can see the fast break points of San Miguel as they isolate Joey Loisaka against Ennis Watley. There's a foul by Watley and he's out of the ball game. Paul Joey Loisaga went on a fishing expedition six and he bagged himself no less than Moby Dick. That's right, you can see Watley there put his foot on top of Joey making him lose the balance. Watley finally fouling out of this uh, ball game. All of a sudden the Añejo fans hopes have been revived notwithstanding that four point deficit. The absence of Innis Watley will definitely tell in the long haul. That's very true, Joe. He has played very steady together with Ricardo. You're going to see that play again as you see Watley put his foot there, and that's the reason why Joey slips. And Juan Fernandez, who was kept in cold storage by Norman Black for much of the second period as well as the third quarter, is trying to limber Black into fighting trim. Well, he's a guy that certainly can lead this team, right? Because right now they have to look for a leader. They have a lot of players on the court there that are fighters like Fernandez, Ricardo Brown, and Hector Calma. Just a two-point lead for San Miguel. They have possession of the ball, Joe. 87-85. Juan Fernandez. Hounded no end by a double team. The trap applied on Juan Fernandez. Almost worked. Were it not for the foul. Or illegal defense. Illegal defense. strength of the San Miguel squad after losing any Swatley that's when they really put on the search that's when they get mad they got mad huh? yes here's the dragon again one of the guys mainly instrumental in breaking the Añejo myth and San Miguel will now join the Crispo Redmanizers as in history as having been only the second team to win a Grand Slam you know, Dr. J, after their five championships in the last three years, people have already started thinking of dynasty in reference to San Miguel Beer. But tonight, they will formalize their claim to being a dynasty by winning that Grand Slam. That's right. It was so close last year for them, but they lost out in a knockout game with Añejo, eventually Añejo winning that over the Pure Foods hot dogs, no? But I'm sure every San Miguel Beer fan is happy for Norman Black, who certainly redeemed himself as a coach, not only as a great player, but as an equally adept bench mentor. He is the first American to coach a team into a Grand Slam, and only the third coach in PBA history 
Well, to that, pull the feet. That's right, joining Baby Dalupan and Tommy Manotto, or that's right. the other two who have done that. As a matter of fact, Mr. Floro really was talking to me earlier and said, if San Miguel wins, I would like to welcome them to the Grand Slam Club. <laughs> that's very gracious on the part of Mr. Danny Floro. So, we now have two teams in that elite club known as the Grand Slammers. You know, Hector is 16 points, 12 of them here in the fourth quarter alone as he came up with very crucial baskets to really break the ball game apart. Huh? And he came up with those baskets just as Ines Watley exited from the ball game, which makes the feat even more phenomenal. 119 to 107. The only issue left unsettled here is the final winning advantage of San Miguel Beer. Who would have thought that this would be such a lopsided series, Dr. J? After all, Añejo Ram had beaten San Miguel Beer so many times in the elimination and semifinal stages. You know, that's very true, Joe. As Samboy goes to the 15-foot uh, line on that six foul of uh, Gonzalo, you know, Joe, counting the eight games that they had played before this, actually the score was four all. San, uh, Añejo taking the first three, then San Miguel winning one. So it's four all right now, and with this victory, San Miguel would really prove that it's the best. Five to four. Well, with 45 seconds left, uh, the San Miguel Beer fans are preparing to unfurl their victory streamers. Uh, and in a very short while, we should see some balloons floating down the ultra-hardcore. Those balloons have been kept uh, hidden in the overhead beams uh, at the ceiling here at the Ultra since this morning. Briggs turns in another two points, but it's all academic now. 121 to 109. Like you see, Joe, it's all over but the shouting. It's all over but the shouting, and there'll be plenty of it as soon as the final horn sounds. I think we're having audio problems. Well, Briggs. we're having some audio problems right now, Dr. J, but we should be able to straighten out in no time at all. In the meantime, you can watch the action anyway. That was Briggs. Did he fall out? Yes, he fouled out. That's the reason why he's going over to congratulate everybody. A very sporting gesture on the part of Carlos Briggs going over to the bench of San Miguel, giving Norman Flock and all the beer men on the San Miguel bench a congratulatory high and low five. It's giving credit where it is due, Joe. Uh, that team has played well. It's Briggs. What does he have in his mouth? He has a wad of cotton in his mouth. He probably sustained uh, a lip cut. Just like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Ray Quinko and Hector Kalma. Christmas gift kuna sa yan. Hector even almost swiped the ball away from him. Yeah. <laughs> if he had dribbled that thing, he put that ball down. Hector would have taken away from him. Only 10 seconds away from the eruption of celebration and jubilation among the San Miguel and, Beer fans. And it's counting right now, Joe. It's counting. Juan Fernandez throws up the ball into the air as the victory streamers are unfurled. The balloons come down, and there is a big smile on the faces of the San Miguel Beer fans, numbering about 5,000 here at the Ultra. Magandang, uh Lim try to help out. Right. Lim is all over. Uh, but the foul is only Turi. He bodied up uh, on Wise. That'll be the fifth against Ituri. Now we see a platoon that's going to go against Wise because Danny Steele is sitting down with four. So it is Ituri. Now we have Jerry Cordinera coming off the bench. Well, Coach Ron Jacobs has a lot of players who could give fouls. <laughs> Singoy <laughs> has a very deep bench, and so far, since they, they went into the penalty, they're telling Fran Wise, okay, you can make them from the foul line, but you're not going to make them from the field. Ready from the line. 87-68, NCC. Time is 2 and 10 seconds. We're in the third. Jeffrey Moore almost had it. Down on the floor is the big man. Jeff Moore takes it away from him. Wise lost his balance. And the crowd enjoyed that bit of action. Kalma good gets screen. away. Yes, good screen by Jeffrey. The NCC team, they're playing well. Juan Cruz has got nine points, being jammed by Lim and Kalma. 
She's playing well here tonight, but you can see some of the NCC players are a little winded at this point. Just a little tired. Hector Kama averaging 10 points per game. He's got 14 as he sits. A minute and a half, third quarter. Still a lot of time for Manila Deer to come back, but they're going to have to start shutting down the NCC team. Jeffrey Moore with an almost incredible shot. Magic time. Jeffrey Moore has pumped in 38 points. Villavin tried a power inside, but Lim was there together with Cordinera. So a lot of fouls committed by NCC tonight because of aggressive defense. On the other hand, for Manila Beer, Kidabin has got four, just about the only one with four. Here's Pomaran, he can shoot two, changes his mind, looking for the hot man. Who responds very steady. Yes, he has a, he's evened his uh, career high of 40 points. Here's Weiss at the wings, lost control. NCC on top by 22. Could be 24. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm sure Coach Ocampo will have a lot to talk about in between quarters. Sam Boy Lim with the block. Jeffrey Moore with the save. Here's Pomaran going to Dick Daniste. It's a tear. It's a breakaway by Northern Consolidated. And Coach Andy Howell is very upset on the sidelines. seconds before the end of the third quarter. Edo Campo preparing La Lota. Uh, Pomaran was trying to beat the horn, so it's 97-71 at the end of the third for NCC. We will be back. better communications on defense because players are just coming wide open right underneath the basket. Atleco takes it from 21. Here is Dennis Steele. He's back in the ball game. He's playing with four personal fouls. He joins Jeff Moore, Pomaren, Alan Kaidik, and Dick Dadise. Once again, offensive rebound for Dick Dadise. Well, NCC... They have found themselves over the limit in the last two quarters. Manila Beer has been over the limit in all of the three quarters. Oh, Fran Wise that time with a nice dunk, but it won't count. Moore. Jeffrey Moore picks up his second personal foul. Jeff Me Jeffrey Moore so far, 45 points. Also 21 big rebounds. On the part of Dennis Steele, 10 points and 10 rebounds. Big night for Jeff Moore. Atoy call stops on a dime. I guess if you look at the game, Pingo, you can say the fact that Northern has been running the fast break well. They have 28 points on fast breaks compared to only 11 for Manila Beer. And the fact that Northern has only committed in this game nine turnovers. That's a pretty good number. Manila Beer has committed 14. Jeffrey Moore gets away. Now, when you prepare for game number two Sunday and you're coming out of a situation such as this in game number one. What should Manila Beer be considering? Well, first of all, everybody's going to have to concentrate on getting back on defense because, let's face it, this NCC team is going to control the boards of, against almost every team they play. So you really have to have somebody back on defense. In addition to that, they're going to have to put the clamps on Jeffrey Moore. <laughs> He's been running wild out here tonight. Now, how are you doing that when you were playing against them when you were still there in the floor under Magnolia well, Clinch Plus. The first thing Coach Ocampo has to realize is Pingor is mostly defensive. I make sure that I box Dennis off and we control our defensive boards and limit them to one shot at the basket. That's the most important thing. A little bit short from Pomaran. He saves it. Dennis still at the corner now. 
Time is under seven minutes. Jeff yes, three-point shot. He's all over the court, and he's been scoring from all parts of this mahogany. Now a rainbow hit. He's got a big 50 points. Well, that's a career high for Jeffrey, and I'm sure he's going to be very happy about today's game. Good dunk shot by Dennis Steele. And I still say that Manila Beer at this point, Pingoy, should try to put a stop to all this because this is just building up the confidence of the Northern team. And it's going to be harder for Manila Beer to come back from a loss like this. It By the way, tonight on uh, BBA Flashback Norman, we will go back to 1984 as we review all the events that occurred in that particular season. Jeffrey Moore again. Two rainbow hits in a row. Time out right after the best player interview and brought to you by Añejo Ron. 119-81 NCC. And they continue to pour. Well, Arenzo, Arenzo is a new player, new face for NCC. Jeff Moore gets a big, big hand from the fans here in Ultra. He deserves it. Yes, he deserves it. He deserves it. it. One hundred thirty-nine, one hundred two, NCC. Quarter and nine-point lead for NCC. Yoya Villamin misses on a fifteen-footer, and the Jolly Green Giant, as usual, pulls down a rebound for NCC. A quick look at the roster is uh, Jeffrey Moore working along with Dennis Steele. Samboy Lim misses a looper. And the rest of the gang for Northern Consolidated are Ibis Dignatisi and Hector Calma, the quarterback. And here's the quarterback for Manila Beer, Mendoza. Tim Coloso quickly to Fran Weiss playing outside against Dennis Still. Cross court to Ed Cordero. He snaps off another 15-footer, and it looks like his shooting hand has gone slightly cold during that halftime recess. Well, he shot that one quickly. Maybe he should have took his time. Yes, he was perfectly open. It would be good if Manila Beer could get off to a good start here in the second half. They're only down by nine points right at this point. Jeffrey Moore laboring his way through and making it off another turnaround. And there's nothing more that Bill Lemin can do. He played perfect defense that time, but Jeffrey still made the shot. That guy is just unstoppable. He's already got 20 points to his credit, plus 11 rebounds. And we're a minute and 20 seconds into the third quarter. Turn around by Fran Wise. Too much muscle behind it, right to the hands of Ibis Dignadise. And here's Hek Calma. Bangs into Eddie Boy Mendoza. Got to let go situation out here. Hek Calma goes to Ibis Dignadise. Half-court offense being displayed by NCC. Dennis still going past Team Colosso, the baseline yeah. drive, and again, Houdini-like, uh, he escaped an entire phalanx of defenders. Well, that extra dribble got him on the baseline and got him an easy two. And they're back with a 13-point lead, 64-51. That was a quick four-point burst by the NCC's right in this third period. Manila Beer still has to score. Yoyo Villamin is going to be relieved by... Abed Gidabin and coming in for Ed Cordero is Gary Vargas who will be seeing action absolutely for the first time tonight. And that's because Cordero had been playing so well. Coloso tries a three-pointer, he misses. Still a 13-point lead for NCC. Ali -oop. That Ali -oop had a capital A to it as usual anchored on the Jolly Green Giants. Yes, Dennis was apologizing to uh, Hector because he didn't dunk it that time. Fran Wise is having a hard time buying his baskets. 66 51, another fast break. And unless Manila Beer can get its act together, there's the threat looming in the horizon of another man sized slaughter. Well, if Manila Beer doesn't score this time and NCC scores again, maybe Coach Ocampo might take a quick timeout here in the third quarter. Right. In the meantime, they have to labor under a 17-point handicap now. They're settling down to a half-court offense. And, oh, oh Gidami just got a in bump eye. in the eye. <laughs> it was an obvious foul that time. It was not called. Here's Fran Wise. The shot is counted. 1985 has indeed been an eventful year, not only for the PBA, but for Philippine sports in general. And Andy Player Special is only too glad to have been a part of the sports landscape through its substantial support as a former patron and sponsor. Furthermore, the makers of Andy Player Special Whiskey intend to continue such support in the coming years as its way of thanking the Filipino people who have installed Andy Player as an indispensable feature of the Filipino way of gracious living. And there goes another basket. Credit that to Samboy Lim. <laughs> 
Boy, I think Sam Boy could be a gymnast. <laughs> oh my the way goodness. he hangs in the air. A levitation acting. 70-54.